At some point in time, every woodworker wants to take on the classic dovetail joint that can be seen by some as quite daunting. This video is purely to demonstrate how easy and practical the Rob Cosman dovetailing technique is especially for beginners and without the need for the special dovetail marking knife. To practice, I've been grabbing any old scrap and squaring it up at the shooting board. Getting your edges square and true is a fundamental basic. I clearly mark out my tail and pin board because I definitely get confused at times. Then place one board on top of the other. Preferring to use a wheel type marking gauge, the base of the gauge is sat on the top of the tail board and the cutter dropped onto the surface of the pin board and then locked into position, giving the exact thickness of the material. The pin board is marked lightly on the front face, as this will be seen, and heavy on the back and the edges don't get marked. Multiple light passes with the gauge work out much better than applying heavy pressure. The tail board is marked out the same way, except this time both edges are marked out to accept the two half pins. When I finally get my red pen working, I set it in the gauge line and mark out the base line to saw to later. Starting with the tail board, a couple of dividers are used to equally mark out the tail spacing. The first divider is set, and from the edge of the board, from both sides, you leave a mark. This is a heavy mark so that it can be seen on camera. The lighter the mark, the less to plane off later. We leave the dividers set and put them aside, as most of the time there are four corners to mark out. With the second pair of dividers, I place them into the first mark and without leaving any marks, walk them across the board. And in my case, I have chosen to have five tails. And that was way off. The dividers are only adjusted a small amount as the adjustment will be times five or by how many tails you have chosen. Then just walk the dividers back again. The distance you get from the last mark to the point of your divider will be the size of your pins. With the dividers set, we place the divider in the first mark and walk the dividers across the board, leaving a witness mark as we go, then follow the same procedure from the other end. It took me a few practice runs at first to fully grasp this technique. Whoever came up with it is a genius. With my preferred dovetail marker, I place the pen in the first mark, slide the dovetail marker up to it, and mark a line across, then from the base line up. After awkwardly trying to work out how to film this without my hand in front of the camera, I place my pen in every second mark, mark a square line across, and a line up from the base line, working across the board. This is far from being a tutorial, more a review on how easy and enjoyable cutting your own dovetails can be. If you haven't already, head over to Rob Cosman, who certainly explains dovetailing far better than I ever could. Now that I have reached the other end of the board, you follow the same procedure back the other way, by placing the pen in the hole, sliding the dovetail marker up to it, and marking out the opposite side of the tail. I've cut out a few tails instead of pins before, so now I make sure I mark out my waist, and even then I've cut to the wrong side of the line, so a little bit of grey matter is needed at times. For muscle memory, it's a good idea to cut all the tails going the same way, and then back the other way. It's all about getting the saw close to the line and cutting square across and following the rake angle. Now it's time to place that saw next to the line and start with light cuts to establish the curve. With the most important point to focus on is keeping that cut as square as possible. That is the difference between a good or a bad dovetail. I try to find the rake angle from the start and once committed to the cut, I try not to alter the angle, as this can leave some gaps. 
It's okay to be slightly off those lines, as these will be transferred to the pin board later. I've been practicing trying to cut down to the baseline as close as possible, so that there is less clean up later, and I think it is a good practice to get things as close off the saw cut as possible. Once the right hand side of the tails are cut, it's time to come back and cut the left hand side. Blowing the dust off and wiping your saw kerf periodically keeps the saw dust from obscuring your cut line. Here I am mainly focusing on my square cut across the end, doing my best to follow the rake angle and making sure I didn't go past my baseline or it will have gaps like old boy's front teeth. Don't be put off by my shiny new tools. I have a tool buying addiction, which only makes me look the part. I still require a lot more practice. Traditionally, the pins are chopped out and the tails are marked out with a knife. With the offset method, the pins stay in for now. The tail ball gets flipped and strips of masking tape get applied to the back and the excess removed. With the marking gauge previously set from earlier, the tape is cut along its original baseline, removing the excess to form a rabbit or rebate. The pin board is placed in the vise and usually flushed up to the top of a plane. The plane gets pushed back and the tail board gets dropped on. That step created with the tape lines up all perfectly. At this point all comes to a halt unless you have one of these, the Cosman dovetail knife with a sawtooth blade. I have just received mine and have yet to use it. I was a bit keen to try the offset method, and not having the special marking knife at the time, I fashioned my own up using a cheap simple mini hacksaw frame. Not being sure if the Cosman method was for me, I wanted to try before I purchased one. So the end was cut off a hacksaw blade, cleaned up, and the paint removed. The Cosman marking knife is a popular item and hard to get your hands on, so this was a necessary step. The saw kerf of my dovetail saw was measured, and the kerf of the hacksaw blade set to match the same thickness. Now we can get back to the dovetailing, and credit where credit is due. This is the unique Cosman dovetailing method. To start out you set your marking gauge to the thickness of the saw's kerf. I prefer to use feeler gauges matching the kerf's thickness. I find it more stable to get a reading. With the pin board in the vise and the tail board on top, the marking gauge base is placed against the pin board. The tail board is then slid up to rest against the cutter's surface, offsetting the board to the left the thickness of the saw's kerf. When the tail board is moved to the left, it's the right side of the tails that get the cutter dropped in and pulled back several times to create a saw kerf for later. At about halfway through I decided to switch over to the newly purchased Rob Cosman dovetail knife and give it a whirl and it was super super nice to use. Just make sure not to move that tail board or you'll have to set it up again. When all the right side of the tails are done the procedure is reversed. The cutter of the gauge is placed on the same side of the pin board and the tail board moved to the right against the base of the gauge. Because the tail board has now moved to the right, it is the left side of each tail that gets marked. Once again, I did half with the homemade and the other half with the Cosman dovetail knife.
just reach into those back corners and take several light passes. When the tailboard is removed, it's easy to see the saw curves, which give you a positive location to place your saw in. Now it's time to run some square cut lines down the face. Being right handed, I mark to the left side of each of the curves, and I make sure to mark out the waist. It's so nice to have a positive position to place the saw in. No more worrying about which side of the line to cut. Only having to concentrate on following the vertical line and not passing the baseline. This saves a ton of cleanup with the chisel, as you will see later on. If you notice the third saw curve from the left, my dovetail saw fell out of the preset mark. If you have a brain fart like I did, you might have a gap to deal with. Now it's time to whip out the fret saw and remove the waste. I need a heap more practice getting my cut closer to that baseline. For now I am just focusing on angling the saw at the end of the cut and slowing down so I don't cut into the side of the pin. The same applies for the tailboard. The fret saw gets dropped in down to the baseline. Lift it up a little, turn to the side and cut just above the line. The tailboard is flipped onto its side and a chisel used to create a wall to sit the saw in so that the two half pin sockets can be made. Again I will try to cut as close to the line as I dare to save on cleanup and to hone in those sawing skills. A chisel is used to clean up, finding the gauge line and resting the chisel on it as a guide to take a pair cut. A good sharp chisel and choking up on it gives great control. To remove the waste, it's good to take small chops and sneak up to the baseline. I prefer to sit down for this part. It brings my old eyes closer to the workpiece and I can still see the chisel is plumb. I use my thumb to guide the chisel into position and when the final cut is taken, you will feel it drop into the gauge line. It's good to chop from the inside face about halfway down. Flip the board over, then chop from the outside face. This reduces the chance of any blowout on the show side. Make sure there is no junk between the workpiece and the bench, as this will leave you with some dints you'll have to deal with. The pin board is dealt with in the same manner, except the chisel is angled to follow the side of the pin. To clean up, place the board in the vertical position, and with the chisel, pair across, cleaning out any junk especially in the corners. Remain choked up tight on the chisel so that you don't blow through to the other side. Once again, I start from the inside and only go halfway through, then flip the board 
and then coming from the show face. The pin board gets cleaned up in the same fashion. I hope this footage gives justice to the Cosman dovetailing method. There is hardly any debris to clean up. Just running a square across to check all is good. Not touching the end of the tails and on the inside face. It helps to come in a few millimetres and put a chamfer to help ease the joint together. And then just clip the little piggy tails off. Unlike Rob and not having the confidence, I still go for a test fit and it's all looking good. For the glue up, I like to put a dollop of glue in the centre of the sockets of both the pin and tail boards and coming in with a small artist spatula, split the difference and spread the glue up all the long grain surfaces where it is needed the most. Then I start praying to the dovetail gods that all goes to plan. All those Doritos felt like resurfacing at this point. I clean up with a plane and we'll go in for a closer look. There is a slight gap where the board slipped while I was marking out, and I should have, but I didn't set it up again. All in all, I think I got a more than reasonable result. Here is the first time I ever tried to cut a dovetail using the traditional method. And yeah, I kind of need filler for this, as compared to my first ever Cosman dovetail. Not perfect, but I was more focused on understanding the method. Here is all the dovetails I have ever cut and it didn't take long to get a more than half decent result. I think I'm ready to take on my first build. So whether you buy or make your own dovetail marking knife, for me as a beginner, I found this method easy and a joy to use. So thank you Mr. Rob Cosman for giving us newbies an easy way to get into dovetailing. If this video can get one person into dovetailing, then that's what it's all about. Until next time, get out there and make and create. Now it's time for a new tool holder to satisfy this tool buying junkie. Thanks for watching.